Post-industrial society has become more distant from nature and the food that we eat. The modern food supply system is the most vital component of our industrialized world. It provides the majority of people on this planet with life-sustaining, affordable food on the table. Without food, society would be unrecognizable in a matter of days. Instead, we've broken free of the burden of growing, hunting and foraging that preoccupied our ancestors and can devote our time and resources to other human activities that bring progress. And yet, the system we rely on is incredibly inefficient. In Europe, households throw away over 35 kilograms of fresh food every year, half of which could be avoided. On a global scale, one-third of consumable food in the world is wasted. That's roughly about 1.3 billion tons annually. But yet we see 690 million people in 2020 living in hunger. The food supply system creates one quarter of overall greenhouse gases emissions. That's the largest single contributor. Food waste arises in households and in restaurants from five main types of losses. Storage losses, which occur because of improper storage. Preparation losses, which are mostly seeds, peels, etc. that come from fruits and vegetables. Service losses, which are mainly what is left on the service dishes and bowls. Leftovers, which are prepared food that is never served. And plate waste, which is what the diner left on the plate. So, I embarked myself on this journey to reduce food waste. Prior to storage, food needs to be purchased. So the first step to reduce food waste is meal planning. Meal planning takes a lot of time to do, but if done correctly, you can successfully reduce food waste. The second step would be to local source. Local sourcing means that it's the most direct way between you and the product as less middleman as possible. Direct trading is the key part of a zero food waste system. Whether direct from farmers or local markets, it reduces packaging waste, transportation, lower purchasing of unnecessary ingredients and quantities, and also lower CO2 emission. Problem with indirect trade system is that the producer doesn't exactly know what the customer wants and the quantity wanted, resulting in overproduction, inconsistent quality due to stock holding, of course more waste, environmental damage and less income for the farmer. The bigger the scale, the worse the outcomes for all. By having industrialization, the food gets processed for us, meaning we don't get to see the byproducts, while a lot of them are just wasted or used in unnatural ways. Farmers are good, middlemen are not, middlemen means processing, packaging, high CO2 emissions and, of course, long distance of transport. Getting things from nature in the way nature intended. Preparation is also important in reducing waste, only buying and preparing what is needed. For example, just knowing how many people are going to dine at your place or how many diners you're going to have at your restaurant. This means fewer ingredients purchased and wasted. Also, use the whole ingredients. In this video, I'll show you a few recipes that I created with all the ingredients that I had and some ingredients I got from the local market. Limitation breeds creativity. So in this video and in the recipes, I'm going to show you how I'm reusing scraps from vegetables, outside of lemons and oranges, stems and leaves that you would never think they could be reused. But I'm going to show you a few tips so that you can next time cook with a bit of more purpose and respect to the food. Let's start. Firstly, I put the cashews to soak, some lemon, half of my bell pepper that I had, oatmeal, oil, mustard, two potatoes, one lemon and some garlic and onion. We're gonna chop everything really fine and we're gonna blend everything. Chop the potato and we're gonna save the rest for later. What you can use with the scrap of the potatoes, you can roast them later in the oven at high temperature or you can as well use it for broth. Silo, a restaurant in the UK, as well uses potatoes to create ice cream. As you saw, we're gonna save the lemon peel for later. There is some food that inevitably cannot get consumed, such as eggshells, customers' place waste or even the mistakes you make in the kitchen. But all of this can be composted. 
Composting closes the loop. All biodegradable leftovers can be thrown into the compost pit, which then feeds back into the soil to grow the next harvest. As well, it can be used to create sourdough. Ideally, at home, you should have a compost bin. You should only use natural packaging that can get composted and used to grow food. But because I don't have, I save the aluminum foil I get from previous food deliveries. And voila! Everything is done. Tip number two. I'm just gonna use the hazelnuts I had and I'm gonna roast them for 10 to 15 minutes in the oven. Afterwards, I'm just gonna blend it all together and add the cocoa and the date syrup to make it sweeter. This is a perfect snack. You can create nut spread out of any seed you have at home. You just need to roast them. Another trick is to collect the leftover of the apple or the pear, keep it in a jar, keep it in the fridge, and use it later to make jam. Recipe number three. I'm gonna use a sweet potato, half of my bell pepper, one cauliflower, chickpeas, and an avocado. I'm gonna cut everything and I'm gonna use the rest for making vegetable broth. Blend the cauliflower until it looks like it's rice. This is a perfect consistency. Put the cauliflower up with whatever you want and put it in oil and start cooking. Recipe number four, candied lemon peels. We're gonna cut really, really thin the lemon peels and put them to boil two times. The third time you should add sugar and after that you should let it cool in the fridge. Keep the syrup with the candy for tomorrow. Then the next day you should just put it out and voila. Recipe, recipe number five, rhubarb apple crumble. I'm gonna use sugar, butter, a bit of flour, rhubarb which is in season and an apple. I'm gonna mix all of the ingredients and then I'm gonna let cooking the rhubarb and the apple. I'm gonna fill the jars with the rhubarb and the apple and on top I'm gonna put the crumble. I'm gonna put it as well on the oven for 25 minutes. Don't forget that everything is connected. Cradle to cradle or closed loop circular system is to turn something into a new thing by choosing materials that live productive long lives that can be reborn to something new. Instead of recycling, take ownership for every material that enters your system. Maximize resources to minimize waste. As you can see here, I'm making now my broth out of all the veggie scraps I collected from previous recipes. After a few hours of boiling, here it is, my own broth made out of veggie scrub. With my homemade veggie broth, I'm gonna use it to make pumpkin potato soup. I'm gonna use a pumpkin, a potato, garlic, ginger, and onion. I'm gonna save the seeds for later. I'm gonna roast them and they're gonna be totally delicious. And as before, I'm gonna save the scraps for later. There's various different food conservation methods, but I'm gonna talk about fermentation. Fermentation is one of the most pre-industrial food technologies we know. It's literally prehistoric. While we don't know exactly where and when it comes from, we know that it's about bacteria eating good bacteria. This actually helps digestion. You can do a lacto-ferment by adding salt and brine in a jar and submerging the fruit or vegetable there. Put as well a cold slow at the top so that there's no air coming out of it. Another conservation method is pickling. Pickling can be used by using apple cider vinegar, which you can create at home from scraps, filtered water and light brown sugar. The future of food is zero waste, so try to make the waste delicious. Progress is messy, so don't unmotivate yourself and always keep going. 
Today's industrial food system provides food that we want, not need. It relies on large-scale agriculture, storage, processing, transportation, retail processes, and middlemen. The system is forcing nature to do what benefits humans, but this is not sustainable. However, choices by individuals have the power to change behavior, trends, and industries. So I invite you to do an experiment and try this at home. It's totally worth it. Given that the food service industry, including hotels, restaurants, and catering, contribute to 12% or 11 million tons of food waste in the EU, given that 12%, it is important that the food service industry recognize that it has a key role in helping to reduce food waste. We have shown that this begins with meal planning, local sourcing, correct storage, mindful preparation, including reuse of scraps and composting of any waste to create a closed loop system. This video was made based on previous research. If you want to know more, go to my references on the description.